Um, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, we appreciate you uh, sharing your ideas and wanting input and um, listening as well. So um, we're all in this together and uh, we're some of us are about to start our summer programs, which is really scary virtually on, on a virtual platform, but we're going whether or not uh, we're ready or not. So here we go. Um, we put together some topics for you um, on the round table. Um, today it's going this round table is going to be um, monitored or um, facilitated by myself, Angie Hogdahl, and the director of the Upper Bone Program at UW Superior and Roxanne Gregg. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi everybody. I'm the director of um, Indiana University, Purdue University, um, Indianapolis here at Indianapolis. Awesome. So again, everybody came into the conversation on mute. Um, so if, uh, you know, it's pretty informal, just feel free to kind of jump in and, and we'll just let discussion go. Uh, the first thing on our agenda. Before that, I think we have a, our president on the line and if she oh. would like to give some words for today, we'd mm -hmm. like to give her the space to do so. might have jumped out. We'll give her some time to um, uh, speak to you guys near the end. How about that, Angie? Sure. Okay. Yeah, so our first uh, topic on the agenda is student staff and mental health, uh, student needs for assessment. Um, we all know from working with our students that, uh, you know, mental health is, uh, and, and knowing ourselves as well, this whole transition in mental health has been a struggle for some. Um, so what kinds of things are you guys doing that you feel works for your students? What are your concerns, um, questions? And uh, we'll just go ahead and open up the floor. I know for me, I, um, um, I hadn't even thinking about doing a student need assessment, but I was talking to a, a co-director in another region and she came up with, um, and they're like a social community service uh, upper bound, based upper bound, and they came up with a list of needs assessment that to kind of prompt us to make sure that in this new world that our students are being taken care of, um, they're safe in, um, along with, I'm sure all of us are sharing resources for students, but um, just ensuring that our students are safe. So um, that's something that we are doing here in Indianapolis that uh, we're going to implement in our next couple of check-ins with our students. Anybody else doing anything? So this is Cincinnati State Upper Bound here. We have partnered with our local National Alliance on Mental Illness to offer Google Meet to, that gives students resources on dealing with stress, anxiety. Um, oh, wow, that's really nice. Feel free to, if you wanna chat, um, to speak in the group, just feel free to unmute yourself to share your resources. I know for um, my upper bound program, uh, you know, we kind of have a good idea of who struggles with mental health in our program. So um, just taking the extra steps and check-ins with those students, um, you know, checking in with them via text um, every single week. Um, just kind of, hey, how's it going? How are classes? Do you need anything? And then offering them up to do, uh, you know, a, a Zoom call if they want to do a Zoom call. Um, just kind of trying to stay in contact with them as far as, you know, how are things going on at home? Mm -hmm. um, so just so they know that people care about them and, um, you know, we're thinking about them and that they can reach out at any time to us as well. Has anybody else been doing any student needs in terms of mental health um, in your program so far? Roxanne, did you say that you do a deeds assessment with your students? 
Um, we we do a general need assessment in terms of academic and just overall. Like we have something called a college career readiness plan, and we do that and we ask general questions. But the need assessment that um, um, I and I can ask if I can share that with you guys on later on. But the need assessment actually asks specific questions about COVID and feeling safe and um, if they're getting exercise and um, we, we, we've we reworked it so that it's sensitive to our population, but there's some things that we feel that some, depending on the student, we may not get, for our population, may not get the answer unless we've asked it or we are purposefully inquiring about these things. Is that something for Summer Academy? Oh, somebody, oops, sorry. I don't know. I'm trying to follow the chat. <laughs> um, this is something that we're just, uh, for somebody asked me if this is something I'm just doing for the summer. This is something that we're um, going to start doing for our pro for my program right now. Like um, we're going to start doing it immediately. That's nice. Somebody said they brought in their summer counselors to start group and one-on-one -on -one sessions and to monitor their mental health status. Nice. Okay. I think partnering with your counseling services might be a good opportunity, but I know ours is like inundated with, they're always um, incredibly full there's hardly there's a a wait to get in to see a counselor on our on our campus. All right, I don't see any questions or anybody else. Can I see a like a, a if I knew how to do a poll? I don't I'm not good at poll. Can I see a poll like a, maybe a, if people could push their um, thumbs up? How many people have done are doing some type of uh, mental health? stuff for their students right now. Nice. Yeah, we've designated um, every Friday as kind of a mental health, get out and do something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being very pointed and proactive um, and putting that into our schedule. Nice. This really is really important um, and, and mental health is has really come to the forefront mm -hmm. and living up north you know in northern yeah. Wisconsin we don't see the sun a whole lot we live by the great big lake which keeps us pretty chilly mm -hmm. so it's uh we have those added factors that kind of keep us down a little bit as well um what about um for your staff anybody anybody doing stuff for their staff This is Cassie with um, Northwest Missouri State. Nice. Uh, some of the things that I'm doing, one of the things in particular I'm doing with my staff is, is allowing them to have a uh, mental health day because uh, we're, we're meeting online all day, most of the day. So for me, allowing them to have that, have that time to, to breathe, not answer any emails, uh, shift whatever they have over to the to another teammate for them to have that day it's 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 proven to be very beneficial okay it's in, in everything is it's dealing with the mindset for real it's dealing with the mindset and the emotions and it's important for me that they are in a good place mentally and emotionally and giving them that day you know I, I think mm -hmm. it's very beneficial is that something scheduled that you're doing Kathy? They pick their own times, um, and particularly now they're picking and picking their times around uh, when their kids are having to do something. So I'll, allowing them that to to be able to do that, but I have to respond immediately to uh, what's going on in the office, what's going on with their, their program or their students. 
it's um, I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a difference in in their their work. Nice. Yeah, and as as B mentioned, uh, we sent out a survey. Um, it was just like a Google Doc survey, um, and you know almost all of the kids filled it out. And I would say a third of the students actually asked for um, you know personal chats or a Zoom or one on one. Nice check-ins. So I was really surprised by the amount of students that were um, wanting that type of interaction. So nice. Yeah. And I would add that some of the students that participated and said they wanted that were students that I wouldn't have necessarily assumed would have been interested mm -hmm. in like a personal life chat. Cause I think being home is bringing up some stuff that, mm -hmm. You're like they're kind of like okay I'm really willing to reach out and extend myself in a way that I wouldn't before because I need something because home is not not working for me right now so mm -hmm. we were glad that we did that it seemed to work out pretty well nice all right I think we should move on to the next topic um, any additional summer policy or in procedures that people have created and um, would like to share with the group? I know that was one of my concerns last time of creating um, a policy and procedures um, manual or some, some written procedures. Is everybody good with what how, what they have established for their summers? I guess I'm assuming everybody is good to go for their summer. Everybody has planned their summer and they're good to go. Can I get thumbs up for that? So everybody is good to go for their summer. Yeah, I see you. I see you, Kim. Oh, my, oh. All right. Well, let's talk about that. For those who are not sure of what they're doing or having some questions, do you have a question that you want to pose to the group to help you kind of wrap up your summer so that you can be in a better situation? Ooh, we'll ask that. That's a good question. Yeah. I don't see a question. So the there was a question in the chat. Oh, I can share um, the policy. It's not really a manual. But it's a yep. So somebody asked about sharing their handbook or their policies to the chat. <laughs> so we, we will definitely do that, um, share it to the, um, we'll send it out maybe, if you wanna send it to Angie or myself, or um, maybe the EOA best practices, uh, when we send out the recording, we can try to include it in there, maybe. Does that work for you, Angie? Yeah, totally works for me. Mm -hmm. All right. So if, if everybody could send, um, I'm going to put my email, Greg A at IUPUI, um, those who have good policies or procedures that they would like to um, utilize, if you want to see that, um, if you have one that you could, you're willing to share, could you send it to me and then I'll try to compile a little folder, a group folder to share that um, when we send out the recording, it can be included. All righty. I think one of the things that we had struggled with um, <clears throat> that we put in our summer policy and procedure was, um, you know, making sure that the students are present. I mean, their name is up there or maybe, mm -hmm. but we're not really sure if they're actually really there, right? So um, we did add that into our uh, summer policy that their face does need to be present as well. Um, and then that just helps us uh, make sure that they're accountable, um, you know, and, and the expectation of, 
you know, we want everybody to participate. So that was a decision that they had to make whether they were going to be participating in the program or not. So, um, and again, I don't think that that, that didn't deter any students away because if they want to participate, they'll, they'll show their face. So hard line to, to put down, but um, we're pleased with the response that we got. So we did the same thing. Um, with our policy that if you want to be counted for the day, you, you know, you have to share, um, you have to screen share. And um, we went and bought, um, for those who didn't have Chromebooks or some type of access, um, we, we actually purchased Chromebooks and all that good stuff uh, so that they can be successful this summer. Yeah, and I think one of the messages in the chat is, uh, you know, sometimes we have a hard time getting our students to engage. So what kinds of things are you guys doing to get students to respond promptly mm. you or to maybe your surveys or, um, you know, some of the other things that you're proposing to them? We have had, I don't know how many people are using Remind, but we have had great success with Remind. And we are recently, we're, we've always used the free version. And um, like a week ago, we did a demo of the actual paid version. And it offers you so much flexibility, you didn't even realize. And it's very affordable, very, very affordable. So we're updating our Remind, but our students respond a lot through Remind. We use that as well. And that's been, that's been helpful and successful for us as well. So somebody asked what added features came from the paid version. Oh my God, it's a life. I, I I know my um my assistant director is on here. She probably can share more. But I mean, we just asked for um a demo, and I was like, oh, we're just gonna get upgrade. I didn't even know the things that was available. Everybody can have their own number. Um. So um, I can expand on that, Roxanne. Um, so basically, we would be a district. So upper bound, IPY upper bound would be the district. And then under that, we would have each have classes so that each of the academic ver um, academic coordinators can have their own class. The mentors can have their own class. And each of them gets a specific number assigned to them. And we can leave voicemails, um, call the students from that number. And then if they respond, they can leave that voicemail for us. Um, we can also see the analytics of how students are responding to the text message. So are they opening it? Are they reading it? Um, and other, it's also integrated with Canvas. So if our teachers wanted to also use it and send, camp, um, send chats through their Canvas to remind students to turn in their assignments, that's another um, option there too. Yeah, I can put the actual and also there, you know, with the free Remind version, there's 140 character limit, but with the paid version, it now goes to 600 character limit. So you can have those longer messages and not have to send three at a time just to get that. I think that sold it for us too. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, um, yeah. At, in fact, we have upgraded almost every digital free version of stuff that we have uh, for this, uh, for our summer, because of the summer. Yeah, what is the, what is the cost for that paid version? Oh my God, it was like less than 600, less than 500. So parents uh -huh. are free, parents are free if they're attached to a student. So we pay for it, we're paying for the student. Um, so it's based on the number of students you have in your program. Yeah. Okay, so is it is is it paid per like for one one to one hundred? It's a certain amount, and then one hundred to two hundred. It's a certain amount. It's actually four dollars per student. Is what okay. we pay at Sinclair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing, guys. In fact. I sent it to a variety of upper bound directors. I was like, yes, you here, here's the contact person. So yeah.
All righty. Any other uh, policies, procedures, summer policies that anybody would like to, to share or ask questions about? And I'm willing to share anything that I have that I use. If you want to email me directly and ask, like, oh, can I see your this? Um, I'm willing to share that. It's kind of hard for me to follow through the um, the chat, to be honest, to see who's emailing me or who's asking questions. So, all right, virtual work study options. I would love personally to hear what people are doing with the virtual work study. Uh, or if they're doing it and what they're doing. I guess nobody's doing any work work study. Quiet group today. Roxanne, how much time do we have here today? Do we have till um, uh, 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 like till three thirty? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just a one hour session today. No, we have another. Oh, we have a two four. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I think some of us are on central time, some of us on are, are on east. Yeah. Oh. Oh, thanks. Melly's on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we're doing, um, I know that COE did a webinar like a week ago or so, but um, what we're doing, we, were, we are looking at two options. We have partnered with Kelly School of Business, and um, which is our business school here on the campus, and they're gonna do something called the Kelly Challenge. And so they're working with a couple businesses to offer um, students to um, do a challenge on a business proposal. They'll meet with people from that company, and then they'll present um, their findings, they'll do a virtual tour with those companies, um, have opportunities to meet with employees, and we're building our programming around that Kelly School of Challenge, uh, Kelly, the Kelly School Challenge. And then in addition to that, we're looking for students to interview, um, to interview professionals in careers that they're interested in and present on that. So we have like a little model we're working on to build up something a little bit um, substantial so that they can earn their work study. Anybody else doing anything fabulous? I don't have work study. I mean, I would like to have work study with our students since we can't do like a bigger stipend. So I know they said that um, you could do some work study, um, you know, if we wanted to, but I just don't know, you know, what would, what would I have them do all day long um, at home or wherever to, to make up some of that work study hours. Hey, Robert, do you want to share what you're doing? It sounds like you're, you're doing something really cool. Do we have the EOA treasurer? On the call. Yeah, it's my if my mic is working okay. Um, yeah. We've been working with a couple other people here around the state um, and uh, put together a series of life skill activities that are going to cover things from uh, how to do some basic auto maintenance and repair, uh, how to do laundry, how to sew on buttons, uh, mending some clothes, uh, how to prep some food, how to set a proper table, uh, just a whole variety of of things that people should know to be successful in life. And then uh, we also want to kind of steer some of our upper class students into digging into some career options and then work on some uh, learning some tips about resume writing and interviewing skills. And then we're hoping we can put that to some practical you know, practice sometime before the end of the summer or maybe when school starts up in the fall. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, thank you, Robert uh, Primavera. I think she is the Michigan president elect. I'm gonna stop sharing and allow her to share her screen. So she has a draft of, so people can get ideas. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And I think, and Jeremy, I think Jeremy has a question. Do you wanna go ahead and unmute while I figure out how to do that and ask your question? Well, I was gonna share uh, what we're doing for our work. Oh. 
Um, oh, awesome. Jeremy Lehman, uh, director of the State Fair Community College Upward Bound programs at Incidelia and Lake of the Ozarks. Um, uh, my advisors approached me with um, and a couple of ideas mm -hmm. and I told them to run with it. And uh, we are going to be doing three separate projects, one each month um, through June, July, and August. They're additional, oh, nice. in, they're additional projects in addition to traditional summer academy, but they're going to be, um, the first one's going to be more research intensive. So they actually have to kind of track their career path. Um, and, and what what they need to do, um, have sources, that sort of thing, and then create a budget. You know, if they're wanting to move out of the area, create a budget for um, living in that area. Like what what's the cost of electricity? What's the cost of rent? What's the cost of cable, you know, gas, that sort of thing, um, and create a comprehensive budget. Um, and so they're gonna, my advisor who proposed that um, is working on his doctorate. So he's gonna kind of run it kind of like a thesis um, almost where they have to do some pretty intensive research into their career path. Um, the second one is we are going to be mapping um, all of the colleges in our state, which is Missouri, um, public, private, four-year, two-year, um, and then they have to do research, find the contact information for admissions and financial aid, um, and then we're going to create kind of an interactive map using the information that they find. Um, and then the third um, is more of a multimedia um, uh, thing where they're going to be creating some promotional videos for us um, to use in recruitment. You know, we don't know what recruitment's going to be like in the fall. So having some videos of students um, interviewing some of our alumni um, and doing uh, some of that. And then we're going to give, um, you know, prizes and things based on uh, the best video. And then... Um, so they'll get the work that they can do all three projects so they could get the full work study or they can do select to do one. But we really wanted to cover a lot of different bases um, for uh, creativity and and people who are more research oriented and things like that. That sounds fun. I want to participate. Wow. And this is all virtual. This is all virtually or you will be in um, in person in the summer. It'll be virtual. It'll all be virtual. Okay. How many students do you typically have for this uh, work study program? I'd like to hear from some other people too. Like typically how many students are we talking about that you run in this virtual? Uh, this is the first year that we're, we're doing this. We're doing this because we want to get money into their hands um, as much as possible. Um, but uh, we, we set a, I set a budget and said, you have 45 slots to, split up between these three projects. It's going to be kind of competitive, but we're not like, we're going to give preference to people who maybe aren't doing more than one. Um, but right now we are looking at about 32 participants for our, our summer. Um, and then, um, so we're hoping to get a couple more that want to get some more money. Nice. Great. How about some other people? How many students do you have participating in your program? 59 B. We're hoping um, to have um, 70 to 80, 47 for Desiree. Nice. Roxanne, would you like me to share my screen? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I'm going to share this. Quick. 27. Good. So this is just a sample of what we're doing. It's still in draft form, um, but we're doing a work study session with our kids too. We have about 14 students who will participate in this. Mm -hmm. So we broke it down into three areas, research project, mapping out their career, um, and what do they want to be. So it does look pretty intense on paper, but it's not intended to be intense. Um, and we plan to just do push out assignments so kids will have to do their own um, assignments on their own and then they'll have weekly check-ins with the staff as well and then we'll help connect them to different professionals to talk to them about their career field we also plan on using that virtual job shadowing site um, 
as well for them to look through that database to see of what professions they want to go into and then kind of live the life of that profession through that website and then talk to um, college students who are studying that career in college to get a sense of what those academic courses will look like, what essential student services are on campus that they need to know about, um, to reflect on what their personal goals and interests are and how that ties into their career field. So that's kind of just a breakdown that we're using. Um, but again, it, it might look intense on paper, but we don't want it to be intense for the students to complete through their virtual experience too. So that's how we're going to set up ours. And this will be our first time to do it this way. Very nice. And I'm going to stop sharing here. Anyone else want to share? Hi, this is uh, B. Vang. I came in the meeting a little bit later. I'm out of UW River Falls. Um, so we're looking at 59 participants. Uh, we are doing the um, work study career college exploration for everyone who is joining us for summer. Um, we are running it throughout um, the six weeks. So it's going to run concurrent with um, everything else that we're doing. We are working on... Um, I will be teaching it, so I will need to build it. So I'm working to build in um, career exploration, research paper, um, presentations at the end of their um, project, and also using the virtual online job shadowing um, as a place to have students do research and listen to interviews. But we're also going to pull in our past mentors that we've engaged with in various capacities to come in and do some afternoon presentations, um, being able to engage with the youth through Zoom, because I know that that personal touch, that personal networking really does help um, the students uh, see a pathway and be able to connect with people who come from backgrounds like themselves, first gen, low income, from their own communities. Um, yeah, so it's still in progress, but I think that it will be a good opportunity to spend down funds and be able to have them present at the end so that they can share with one another their plans, their goals, and be able to learn from one another's research as well. Nice. Love it. And how many hours per day? Did we get that answered for the virtual work study? How many hours a day that we usually typically? You want to throw your number in the chat just like you did how many students are participating? That would be good. I'm just doing a week. I'm doing I, I'm doing a regular summer program, and then we're gonna do like 40 hours a week. Usually my work study is like two or three two to three hours a day throughout the duration of our summer program. Um, but I'm just gonna do virtual academy for five weeks and one week of just a work study internship experience. Um, after that. Angie, um, I just described mine. Again, this is B. Vang. Um, the first week is going to be uh, that class will be the core in which they'll be learning um, a lot of the theory and doing the inventories and finalizing, picking a career field to research. And then throughout the rest of summer, it's going to be a little bit lighter, but more like project uh, deadlines for them to be able to interview a college student or a professional in that field by a certain deadline, and then being able to attend the um, mentoring Zoom meetings. So as terms of number of hours per week, um, I would say the first week, at least 10 hours, because that's part of our core. And then throughout the rest of summer, I would say probably um, in terms of the work that they'll do, at least two to five hours uh, weekly, depending on what they're attending and how they're pacing themselves. Very good, thank you. Nice. All righty, the next topic on the, um, the, the agenda, which goes directly to what um, we were talking about, budget spin down ideas. So 
all this money, no place to go. <laughs> so I would love to hear what other people are doing. We purchased just a list of things that we're doing. We purchased Chromebooks. So I'm sure everybody's doing technology, um, but Chromebooks don't really cost that much. And this is the scope of a scope of things, but we're, we purchased Chromebooks. We purchased headphone sets um, so that they can make sure to hear each other um, with headphone sets with mics. Um, we purchased, we are looking at every um, reasonable digital stuff that we could include into our uh, programming that would be easy. So I think um, we're looking at, we're doing masterclass. We're looking at Soundtrap. We're looking at, um, or we're not looking, we're paying for Canva Pro. Um, so all the free versions of things that we have had, we've upgraded to professional versions. Anybody else has done anything? We were able to process shirts, um, some of those things, but we did have to, um, I, th I think after talking about budget spend down, I think another conversation we could talk about uh, is how we all are getting our supplies to our students and how we're doing that through a socially distant um, and safe way. We have virtual job shadow too. So anybody else is spending money or to share what they're spending. Lisa, Lisa, we were past the work study, but Lisa shared with Indiana a really cool work study op option that um, I know Lisa probably is really quiet, but Lisa definitely should share her. It's something about sneakers. They're working with sneakers, building a sneaker company. And I think that that would be a cool and that costs some money to do that program. Lisa, you want to share that? Yes, it's um, through study smart tutors and it's called sneaker essentials and so the students actually design a sneaker and then they have to go through the marketing and the manufacturing and just running the business of selling um, sneakers in a sneaker company so it's a virtual project and um, they have to explore careers in each of those different areas as far as manufacturing um, supply chain management, uh, design. So they're getting the career exploration and then learning how to run a business. So if they get the certificate, we're giving them the um, work study money for that. Very nice. Can you plop in the chat what that is called? And you paid how much for it, Lisa? It uh, depends on how many students. So we paid $6,000 for about 20 students. Looks like some people are spending money um, with the daily lunches and a survival kit. Misty, please share. afternoon good afternoon um just kind of spending money on the same type of things as far as the survival kit same type of things that everyone else is spending um, we're just going to get um buying everyone a backpack and we're going to put um i am purchasing um our high school gives the students ipads um versus chromebooks i don't know why but all the students have an ipad so we're going to purchase uh, keyboards um, and a mouse um, to attach because they can't stand just doing the touch screen. So we're going to have the, um, the keyboards, also um, the headphones, um, the mic attached to it. Um, same type of thing, just making it into a survival kit. Um, a lot of the things that the teachers will need um, to do their classes, the science teacher um, has a list of things that um, will be able to do experiments from home. Um, we're doing a book read, so just you know, purchasing a book. Um, so whatever is needed for the classes to be implemented, we're putting in this survival kit. And then um, we have a remote campus 
uh, for our college that um, is in a walkable distance from the students. So they're basically, I'm gonna have a, um, every Monday just have a pickup day. So we'll just basically be um, giving the backpacks or the daily meals out of our trunk and just having the students uh, come and pick up the supplies. Um, of course, it has to be socially distanced, but that's the best way that we can do. Um, we're still trying to work out the daily meals. Um, wow. I don't know what we're trying to do, either um, box lunches or something that can last a week, or um, the students are already receiving from their high school. They give them frozen meals that they're able to uh, like put in the microwave. Oh. Wow. You didn't get pushed back for that? Um, we get pushed back for everything, so but I, you know, we fight for everything. So um uh they we still got the approval. Wow. Congratulations. So just, um for our program we are also doing the whole uh survival kit and meal. What we're doing though is um the Friday before that week. We're right. meeting the kids at the high school and our um, dining and catering department from our university, they're going to assemble a week's worth of breakfast, lunch, and a snack. Wow. Um, and so, and as well as the beverage. So they might have like a half a gallon of milk for the cereal and like all of these other things just to kind of um, consolidate it like that. But um, the kids will come on Friday and of course, not getting out of their vehicles, they'll get a box with that upcoming week's supplies. So that way we don't just um, pass everything all out at the beginning. So if we're doing certain science experiments and they need to have X, Y, and Z, then they'll get it that Friday. And that's also a way for us to kind of stay engaged with them. Um, and obviously, once people start hearing like, oh, man, we got this lunch, we got to do this, then they're going to maybe want to, you know, um, participate as well and we're intending to do work study um with ours we were looking at the virtual job shadowing but we're also going to uh we, we have our summer program in the morning from like 10 to one o'clock and then we take an hour break and those students who are doing work study they check in with their supervisor at um an hour later and they have a meeting with all of the co-workers you know because we're going to use that language and we'll start off with just some of the basic you know, interview skills and things about just those life skills that they need to have for professionalism, but then they'll be researching a career and doing a project. And we want them to each create a website. They're all going to, we're going to use Wix.com. So they're making a personal brand website where they're going to be able to populate like a LinkedIn account, their research projects that they do through us throughout the academic year, as well as the summer program. They can put things in there like, um, their resume with their resume without a phone number or address. It would just be their email. But these are things that are going to really help them to be a living document that they can continue to use. I love the website idea. Mm -hmm. How beautiful. Yes. So, but I did not hear there was someone that was speaking about their work study program i heard the sneaker one but everyone's like oh that sounds like a great idea i my daughter came to the door and i got distracted at that time i, I would i'm interested in hearing about other work studies and how they're actually implementing them um i think that was um what we'll do is this recording will be available so then you okay. can hear it all um, okay so can make sure yeah but i all love right. it Jazz, can you share about what you're doing? I love it around the world with UB. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this year we're trying to, again, just get our students involved in general, um, you know, get them excited about online summer programming. So um, we thought putting a theme with our summer is would be a cool way to get them involved. And so um, each week we're going to focus on a different country. Um, okay. and we've asked our teachers to somehow, if they can, I mean, if they can't, that's fine, but to somehow integrate the country of the week into their learning, just to kind of make it more creative um, and not so much the, I guess, the same kind of curriculum that, you know, classes will really have. Um, so we're asking the teachers to incorporate that. We also do have like our, our family time where our tutors will, you know, have their time with the students to do activities and whatnot. And so we're asking the tutors to also in integrate that. 
Um, and so with that, you know, everyone needs supplies. And so we're taking um, a list of supplies that people may need for their activities, as well as we're providing the students with like little mini passports. Um, and then we have a bunch of like little stamps for the different countries that we have as well. So each week when we deliver our care packages, we will, you know, they'll open their box, they'll see that, you know, this is the country of the week, and then we'll stamp their, um, their, pass their passport. And then also in there, we have, um, we'll have different like recipes for the week that students can, you know, do with their families. Um, and they will be based off of the, the country as well too. So trying to do at least two meals um, for the week for, for the students as well too, but really trying to hone in on that um, that country theme idea and then also thinking about putting maybe putting um, let's see like some books from authors from that country as well too so just finding different ways to one spin down but also express the different cultures and things that come along with those countries good idea Yeah, people share kind of what um, their procedure is for pickup of these materials because we're, we're struggling right now. Um, we were going to mail things to them, uh, mail their supplies to them, but that's becoming so overwhelming. <laughs> um, but I want to be safe as far as like if we went into the communities and, and we we have 12 different schools, so we have to travel to a lot of different places. So um, I was just interested in hearing what what people were doing as far as procedures for that drop off or pick up. Our program, we have a, we have I think the size of the box is 12 by 12 by 15. Um, and their summer binder is going to go in that. All of their supplies for the program, I mean, pens, pencils, markers, um, you know, a little um, water paint kit. Um, and then our evening activities that we're hosting, sometimes we're going to do like cooking night, um, kind of teaching some of those life skills type things. Um, uh, we're going to do like a, um, uh, like a face mask thing. We're going to do... Uh, painting nails. We're going to do um, bingo night. Uh, that it's kind of surrounded by um, trio stuff. So um, we're sending all of that stuff home to them in that box. Um, we're prepared to send home two boxes, uh, one for the first two weeks and then one for the second two weeks, which may also include our summer science um, box as well. So wow. we're not quite sure what it's going to cost to send that box, um, but uh, I think it's going to be because yeah, we're pretty spread out as well. So for us to deliver those boxes, I think it'd be a big ask for our staff to do that. So um, we're going to, we're going to ship them out. We're actually going to pack them all up tomorrow and they're going to be shipped out on Friday and hopefully delivered within the next week. So. Angie, how are you doing your, your supplies? Like, how are you? Well, my university has closed down. Nothing can be delivered to the school. So how are you doing your supplies and how are you, sorting and all of that yeah so this I kind of have a little bit of a knack for it and a lot of people tell me that they think I'm a little crazy but um you know all of their binders I picked up from the school and all of the summer supplies you know their paper and books and all that stuff um and then I went to Walmart and got all of the you know the food and the crayons and the, all the other stuff that I'm going to need um and we have about 35 that we're packing for um along with our bridge students so that's an additional 10 uh, eight um, which will be kind of a separate box. They're, they're going to get some different stuff, but um, nice. make an assembly line and go through and, and pack it in the box along with. So, so you're doing it yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for uh, our um, school, our school is very conservative in that regard and very I shouldn't say conservative, very cautious. Um, so I have to present a plan we're doing a drive uh, pickup, a drive-by pickup. And I have to present a plan that has to be approved all the way up to the chancellor in order for it to happen. Um, so I'm in the second stage of my plan getting approved, but essentially it is um, staff will come, we have all our supplies, um, depending on what staff is coordinating what, um, they can be the keeper of you know, their projects and stuff they're doing all of their sorting and getting 
prep work. Um, then, um, and also we're hoping to serve up to upwards of 80 students, 70, 80 students. So um, we've, we're gonna go in a day before in shifts um, with mask and PPE and making sure that everybody is socially distant and have work areas. Um, we're gonna lay out our students um, by name on a big, like a big, um, we have a big space so we can sort, lay the students' names out um, in alphabetical order. And then we'll put the, depending on what classes and um, our residential stuff, we're gonna put them in those um, students' um, bags. And then uh, the Chromebooks, uh, we're gonna pick up separately. And then um, the next day, we're gonna have shifts for parents and students to drive through. Uh, when they come in, um, they'll open their trunk and we'll place the stuff in the trunk um, and then move on. That's what we're working with now and hopefully that gets approved. Yeah, and so we're, we're gonna tape them shut, put a label on them and then drop them off at our shipping dock. At our yeah. Nice. What was your dimensions you said you were using, Angie? I think it's a 12 by 12 by 15. Okay. If I remember right? Okay. Maybe B can give me a head nod there. Oh, yeah, there Sounds about right. I think that's about what it was. I can't imagine doing anything more than once, to be honest. This was a whole, like, for me, for me to get stuff approved, man. It's, a, it's an ordeal. Does anybody else have to go through the, as many hoops as I have to go through for this? <laughs> nice. All right. We can go on to the next topic, I think. There was a question about uh, residential bags. What are you doing to drop off residential supplies? I don't think I mentioned, I don't know if it was me or not. I didn't mention anything about residential supplies. Um, I just have some cooking stuff, um, school supply stuff, and um, like evening activity things. Same. And bingo daubers. Mm -hmm. Related to education, of course. Ish. <laughs> but, how many people are doing like a residential-ish type of experience with their students are trying to simulate a residential experience. We have a virtual, we've kind of established like a virtual roommate. Mm -hmm. That's just basically where they're paired with another student that they, you know, check in with and they are held accountable with, you know, if, if they don't feel necessarily comfortable coming to us with something, they can go to their virtual roommate. Um, we paired our newer students, our first year summer program students with uh, some of our veteran students. Right. Um, it's kind of a check-in, how are you doing? Are you, are you feeling comfortable? Are you getting what's going on? You know, that kind of stuff, getting them to participate. And they'll do the hand-holding for us. Nice. All righty. We're doing a similar thing. Uh, next on the list is um, any uh, questions about student stipends and um, processing that. Everybody walk, walk, work through that. Everybody's good. I have. I have a, a question. How how do um, some of you guys um, give stipends? Is it through check or a debit card? Because I've been I've been trying to get like the university where I work to do like a debit card um, rather than the checks because you know students always have issues um, cashing them because they don't have accounts or whatever. Um, but you know even now like how we even give it to them now. But you know it, it just seems like. When I asked the like the procur procurement office, like if we could do debit cards, they keep saying no. We gotta keep doing checks. It's like there's no way to change their minds. I don't know how other people do stipends. 
I know for um, for us, we have traditionally done um, cash in the summer for our students. And so um, this year we are trying to um, start a new program where we have um, reloadable cards. And I think we, yeah, I got this idea from B um, in their, uh, their school, but our business office is working to get that program um, implemented as we'll be the first, I guess, office or anyone on campus that is. Um, started to use this, but yeah, hopefully that can get going um, by the start of our summer, so. Um, Robert had mentioned $60 a month for stipend or getting the $300 for the uh, the work study life skills option. Thank you for pointing out that it's an or, not an and. Um, the th someone I think had mentioned in the past round table that they were thinking about doing the 360, and I do not believe that is allowable. I think uh, last time somebody talked about Green Fire, I think, as an option um, that their financial aid department uses Green Fire um, to disperse scholarships or funds for students, and that might be something you can tap into. Um, I know that's not an option for us, so. For us, for student stipends, we're going to be mailing them home and then we're creating um, like a DocuSign or a Google Doc for them to go in there and um, let us know that they received it and the amount and then they'll do their virtual signature as well. Oh, nice. Along with the, when they receive their care package as well, we're going to also create something so they can go in there so we know that they received it. Just, you know, that extra tracking um, piece that we need to do for. Does your, does your, um, campus have a DocuSign account or did you create a DocuSign account for your Upper Bound program? Um, we're in the works of working with them and getting that DocuSign, um, but okay. if we're not able to get that, then we'll kind of revert back to that Google Doc. Alrighty, any other questions about stipends? Um, any concerns? Any concerns about documenting and reporting during this time? I see none. No questions. Um, and then um, anybody doing in-person programming this summer? And have you guys begin to think about what does um, the fall begin to look like for us? I can't tell if this is a good topic or everybody's so quiet. I'm gonna unmute everybody. <laughs> Well, us in Wisconsin, who, you know, is open for business, apparently, um, we have some reservations at the university here, and, and we're taking things pretty slow um, as far as what the fall is going to look like. We're still waiting for guidance as far as uh, from our administrators on if they're going to allow us to come back to campus this fall. I think they're still trying to make some decisions in regards to fall classes for college students, but um, also sometimes they forget we have pre-college programs that come to campus as well and what that looks like. Um, that's unique for our program because our students actually come to the university for tutoring. We do not go to the schools typically, so we're pretty fortunate that way. Um, but that's an added element that they need to think about is, you know, when we're bringing, you know, five students to campus um, and studying in the library, that's a large amount of people. So we're still looking for guidance as far as what that's going to look like. Along with our Saturday academies, are they going to allow us to be on campus for Saturday academies in a classroom with 45 students? Um, so those are all things that are still waiting to be discussed. So mm -hmm. I don't know if we're going to have to break them up into groups of eight um, or, you know, again, we're in Wisconsin, so anything can really happen. <laughs> yeah. We are also in Wisconsin. I'm with UW-Milwaukee. And one of the things I'm struggling with is as we've opened up, our students are out and about with everyone. and. Mm -hmm. 
if anybody's got any ideas on how to talk to them about that without being a complete stick in the mud that they won't listen to, I would love to hear it. Yeah, let me know. Well, one of the things that my group did um, during this time uh, with the academic year, we're up for bound math science. <clears throat> we came up with a list of 12 different topics around COVID-19 from the math behind it, the engineering behind it, the science behind it, the technology behind it, the history behind it, the top uh, five conspiracy theories behind it, how it's impacted education, and then the careers that are directly and indirectly impacted as a result. And so there were 12 different topics and then the students broke up into small groups of- hey, Desiree, you're cutting you know, out. You mind repeating that? Four and um, they selected which topic they wanted to do their research on. And we had a rubric where they had to create a video, which was between three. Um, I'm so sorry, I have a bad signal where I'm at. But um, I was saying that for our students, what we did is we had them select from like a list of 12 different COVID-19 topics from we're up for about math science. So they had it in math, like how it impacts math, science, technology, engineering, careers, all of these various things. But then afterwards, um, they, they all presented their videos and I had a rubric and a, a, a Google form survey link after we watched each video, everybody would open up their link and they would uh, populate their oh, that's a great idea. for how they thought that that team did. And then at the very end, there was a first, second, and third place winners for their research on COVID-19. So they got to see multiple aspects of it, like the math, they're learning about um, epidemiologists and, you know, the engineering, all these different things, like in Mexico, where they created these pods, or in Italy, where they did. So all of the kids got to see all, all of this in-depth things, but they created it themselves. So, and um, it's actually public um, in the chat. And if you click on there and go to like the student spotlight, it's, you can see the uh, uh, Did you say you put that in the chat? Yeah, she did. Second and yep. third place in our video. Oh, awesome. Oh, you put it, oh, you put it on the website. Oh, awesome. That, that, that's excellent. Oh, wow. I keep going back and forth. That's an excellent idea. I mean, it's the best way to get students involved and maybe they could take this um, somewhat seriously. That's yeah, awesome. so it was a research project. And then when we did our end of the academic year awards, we announced who the winners were and we showed the first, second and third place videos um, live. So like the school did a press release, our university did a press release, oh, wow. um, superintendent. So I contacted like the local media to say, to kind of get the kids to really want to do something of some type of, cal you know, good caliber because, you know, they're all doing their remote work from home if they're doing it and trying to get in touch with them. But knowing that um, I told them that they can get community service hours for it because it's a public service announcement. So what they're doing, that's their audience, is that they're supposed to be teaching and explaining, you know, how uh, COVID-19 impacts those various um, topics. I'm actually getting ready to log on to my computer because I can share that too. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. But you guys can carry on while I... <laughs> um. One thing I wanted to let people know is that um, I had talked to Angelica um, maybe last night and I asked her about 
carry forward. And if they had any direction from the Department of Ed, I'm sure um, our president can chat about that. Um, but she did say that they're recommending carry forward um, of $95,000 carry forward. So if you want to keep that in mind as you are planning, um, that's what COE is recommending. Does that depend at all on the size of your grant? I don't think so. Because it used to say $25,000 was the $25,000, $30,000 was the max you should technically be carrying forward. Um, but, you know. I can speak to that, Roxanne. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Stewart. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Yes, on that uh, call the other day with our uh, COE board, the conversation, the reason that an amount came about was because folks thought that um, because of the size of everyone's programs that a percentage would be less or more for a particular program, right? So the, the longer you've been around, the more money you have. So if you say uh, you can now go over an additional 10%, that means a lot for you. But for a program that, that, that is newer and has less funds, that 10% won't really go far. So we just kind of, we went back and forth on a few numbers and, and, and came up with 95,000. Uh, Maureen did not want a, a number that sounded really good, like let's just say even 100,000. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we said, do we go up? Do we go down? So they settled for uh, 95. And so that's what we presented to uh, Linda Burke Johnson and as uh, hopefully uh, something to consider that the, that the uh, DOE will consider for us. But that's how they got to the 95 and the number of your program, uh, number in your program won't matter. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Keep it below six figures. Our treasurer Ross, UA treasurer here. <laughs> um, and I think. All right. uh, okay. Oh, there you go. All right. Yeah, I just came on, so let me go to share screen. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. So this is the website. This is actually my COVID-19 project. I created all of this during this time off. So I just used Wix.com because I wanted to have our, our universities access for directors and people to be able to up populate their own information is very, very slow and uh, limited. So I got permission through our IT department to go ahead and do this. So um, here, you know, they're able to see pictures. They can look on the website and look at uh, different things that are taking place. If they're ever wanting to know, parents can learn about it, just like any other ones if we have articles. But this is the one, the student spotlight. So um, we announced like who our student of the year is and then, uh, you know, the graduates and their decisions. But this was the COVID-19 research project winners. So if you click on the medals, then you can see, like if I click on the math behind, and you don't have to watch the whole thing, because I know you guys all have 10,000 things. The math behind the virus, created by Draven R and Sierra H. And they had to have, like, I can show you the template. They had to have so Shortening many sources the numbers. and documents. As you can see on the screen, the daily outbreak could reduce dramatically if people social distance. How much has the virus spread? As of Friday, March 27, 2020, all U.S. states have over 2.4 million. Sorry, now. But you see, they talk Healthcare about providers, computer scientists, and statisticians, and epidemiologists are the careers behind the numbers. Chris Murray is the director of the Institute for Health Metrics. And okay, so that was an example of that one. And then this, the other one that got third place was um, educated, like the, students will not the be seniors. returning to schools for this academic school year. Dear class of 2020, we did it. Who would have thought we would have made it this far? But now we have to leave it all behind before we're even done. And as our uncertainties have become our reality, and as our norm becomes, and I'm not going to show all that, but they go into you know, getting a, a number on paper and not, not teachers. a real relationship. You know, there were seniors out that um, realized that right now that is teacher, she made all of us kind know, of cry I when she tell them how I um, I miss that. Aww. But I can't tell them how I feel. I miss that. For a lot of them, it just has turned into them being you know, a, a number on paper and not, 
and not a real relationship. You know? They had the kids. COVID-19 has impacted us the most through our basketball season. We didn't get the opportunity to win or play anymore in the postseason. It's heartbreaking that we do not get to so experience our senior year. I'm just showing, just showing like pieces. And then the second place was the history behind it. And we were really impressed by their uh, visual. I'm like, wow, this looks really good. Wow. Grammar. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Coronavirus disease 2019 is an upper respiratory virus that causes fever, coughing, and difficulty breathing. COVID-19's first case was in Wuhan, Hubei province so I'm not in China. Show all of that, in sight, the only preventative measures to be taken were self-isolation, limited crowds, and most Spanish importantly, blue and personal hygiene. History. Maybe one. People will want to place unneeded blame, creating stigmas. And let me see. Go to cdc.gov for more info. And please stay healthy. And then our first place was the science behind. And the reason why I like this, our population is about 80% Hispanic. Um, we have a lot of undocumented families and people who don't speak like English is not their first language, a lot of their their parents. Mm -hmm. So this person did captions and everything as well, which I thought was awesome. Hi guys, my name is Paulina Gutierrez and today I would love to inform you about the science behind COVID-19. Before I begin, I would like to give a special thanks to the program Upward Bound for the idea to help inform the community about this current pandemic. <laughs> for your safety, you should maintain a minimum of 6 feet or 2 meters, as a reference the size of an average bed. COVID-19 is basically a respiratory zoonotic disease that first appeared in Wuhan, China at an animal market. They first detected this type of illness as a pneumonia of an unknown cause in Wuhan, China on the 31st of December 2019. Yep, that's how it got its name. COVID-19 Coronavirus mainly spreads through respiratory droplets such as a sneeze or a cough. And these droplets are most likely to land on people new copies of the virus. And every infected cell can release millions of copies of the virus before the cell ultimately breaks down and dies. The virus could infect nearby cells, I mean, she gets or into, like, the RNA RNA's and main the role is to act as a messenger ABC carrying instructions from the world. Occasionally, no. however, but the virus can cause before, severe like problems. Whole, uh, this <laughs> um, thing, but I can share, like, it was really simple because we have our Google Drive and we have the Google form. And so as we showed each video, just like you guys were watching, we would have all the students open up that form for that, that video. And then they would quickly answer like six questions, just like rating them one through five. Like, did they answer the purpose? Did they, um, were they creative? Did they cite at least three different sources? Did they have um, right. you know, all these different things? And then that's the students got to vote. You know, they got to participate. So they had, we had about maybe 400 people who came and watched them oh, online. Wow, and nice. so they were, it was really nice, but, but that's something you could do during the summer as well as a research because it, it talks with all topics, you know. That's all right, really I'll stop. Great. These are the students that are going to be running our country someday. I know. Yes. Just want to be mindful of the time we have about. <laughs> yes. So sorry. 13, 13 minutes left. And yeah. And what do we have left on our agenda, Roxanne? I'm just going to open it up for sharing any cool ideas that you have or any last burning questions that wasn't answered today. One thing that we're doing is to increase the continued participation and morale is um, one of our team members came up with the idea of having bad, a badge system. And so as they participate throughout the summer, they earn badges and then we'll ship home hot Cheetos or some fun little snacks throughout the summer um, to increase uh, participation. That's a good idea too. Anything else? What will those, how will they earn badgers, badges? Oh, well, we would like to have badgers, but, um, um, so we are working with our technology technology platform that 
um, I think is connected through Canvas. And so we created a class and then we've created three or four badges. Like we have an academic badge, we have a participation badge, we have above and beyond badge. Um, and in those badges, there are a variety of care, uh, variety of things they can earn. Um, we're still working that out as a team, like um, attending first day of class, uh, meeting with your Zoom mate. Um, I don't know, we have, we're creating the buckets and then we're creating tiers. So tier one, for, or we're sending out like, like the first week, um, and we're still fleshing out what it looked like. The first week, if you get so many badges, you earn so many badges, you get um, a bag of hot Cheetos sent to you. The second week you get maybe, we still have some wireless chargers in our office that we're gonna steal once we get uh, approval to go in. <laughs> and send to them. So just a variety of things that we know that they would be interested in. Um, and then the system that's created, um, it has a leaderboard so that they can make a, um, an avatar in that class, the upper bound class. And so as they earn badges, they can see where they, they are placed amongst the class, um, how well they're doing with their badges. But something our IT service, um, if we didn't have IT, we would just create our own badges and we would just use a spreadsheet and a Google form and share it on um, social media. You know, look who's winning this week or whatever, the top five. We are, we are working with Google Meet because as the students are using, mm -hmm. oh, our target school does not include Zoom. We are using Canvas and Zoom. Um, anything else anybody would like to share? For math, we're gonna be doing their normal, um, the math, depending upon what grade they're in, if it's algebra or you know trigonometry. But the other thing that we're gonna be offering is they're gonna do the faux stock market. Mm -hmm. And there's a website called How the Market Works. So not only each student gets $100,000 um, and then they're able to compete during the course of these six weeks. So there's actual lessons and videos and our math teacher will follow through. And this is gonna not only, um, they're gonna to have to do math and like do research on, you know, what shares do they wanna get, why? Like considering that right now it's COVID-19 and all that's going on, it's obviously having an impact on that industry as well. But not only that, it's a career. Like this is something that someone, they may not have ever thought that they would be um, comfortable even pursuing because it's a foreign language when you see that ticker. And so we're trying to make the um, classes a lot more practical and useful and engaging and competitive and fun. So we're doing that for math, for science, though we're working with the home science tools website and they have all these various kits. So I tried to find some that were not super expensive, but um, I think altogether it's coming to like almost like 400 something per student for the whole six weeks, all of that. And then for foreign language, um, we have graduate assistants and myself. So I, went to school in Korea. And then I have another oh, graduate nice. assistant who's from Brazil. So they're doing Portuguese. Then we have German and Japanese. So each week it's gonna be more of a cultural immersion. Someone mentioned the whole passport. Mm -hmm. So each week they'll be working on um, more of an exposure to these languages because a lot of people, again, are very fearful of learning um, especially a lot of the Asian language, when you look at the words, it looks so intimidating, but to at least see, and the thing that people don't realize is that Spanish, you know, it's called Espanol, but Korean is called Hangumao, which means the morning language, meaning that it's something you can learn in a single morning. It's that simple, but it's so foreign to people, you know? Nice. Well, we're going to turn it over to um... Rebecca, our president of EOA, and give her the opportunity to give remarks before we wrap up. Hello again. I'm so thankful uh, for this opportunity, Roxanne. Thank you. And Angie, I appreciate you both for um, putting this together and for uh, moderating, facilitating, and everybody that's here joining in uh, on this discussion. I also have an Upward Bound program, and so I was taking some notes vigorously and you all are doing some great things. I'm super excited about that. Um, so today I have been on the phone with all of our Congress people. I have a call with Josh Hawley in 
five minutes, so I'll keep it short. But, um, you know, really, we just want to continue to keep uh, stay connected with you uh, as the association progresses. I did send out a couple of emails in the last few days. Um, one was about committee involvement and um, serving in leadership roles. I know it's the last thing you're probably thinking about, but you should be thinking about it because you are at home and you're not doing work eight hours of the day. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for some good folks to join our team in our, our leadership team for the association. So I hope you will please consider where you can contribute uh, and where you would like to contribute. And then also, this is hot off the press, but uh, our, our um, uh, election results are in. And so I'll be sharing those with you. So look for that announcement at the end of this week. I think I'm sending that out probably Friday, but uh, our voting was up 28% from last year. So, hey, that's pretty good. I mean, we got folks involved and um, we had a full slate, so I couldn't be any more happier. So in, in that same vein, you should get involved because we're doing great things in EOA. Um, I'll have some more updates for you. We're, we're finishing out the COE board meeting uh, tomorrow. I have all the committee meetings and then Friday will be the final, um, the, the full board meeting. So after I get some more updates from COE, uh, we did speak with Linda Bird Johnson and primarily that conversation on two, what's today? Wednesday, so on Tuesday, primarily that conversation was about uh, the funding for um, the, the, the next phase of the COVID relief funds and the FY 2021, FY 21-22, where we're asking for increase in funding, a um, hundred and, what am I asking for? $250 million where 164 million of that would go to all TRIO programs across the board for an increase of, so we could serve more, 15% uh, more students and increase our outreach. But more specifically, 32 million of that, 250 would go towards EOC programs so they can increase by 50% and uh, either funding new programs or continuing services for other programs. And then 54 million to increase the educational talent search programs. And that would help increase them by 25%. So that's our current ask. Um, I sp in Missouri, I spoke with uh, Roy Blunt's office earlier. He is on the Appropriations Committee. And you know, everyone's kind of giving you the, well, we are, oh, well, you know. So we just thank them and keep it pushing, but you've got to do your advocacy on the ground there too. So make sure that you're staying in contact with your, your local legislators and, um, and any, in the aides in those offices, you know, send them goodie bags too, as you're sending them to your students. <laughs> Think about them. When I was in Ohio, I used to always send, we'd go over there and give them uh, Buckeyes. We'd go up and, and drop and they're like, oh, well, we love these. Of course, everyone loves peanut butter and chocolate, as long as they have no allergy. So, <laughs> um, so that is our ask on today. And I know that after we speak a little bit more with uh, Rashawn Moore and uh, Gaby Watts, those folks tomorrow and Friday, that I'll have more to share with you all as a region. So I've got four minutes, technically two, so if anybody has any quick questions, I can take those or uh, comments. You see any? Yeah, Michael asked, did, did they give me um, advice on service numbers if you don't meet, meet your uh, goal numbers? No, uh, really what they're saying right now is that on your last reported APR, so that would have been our 18-19 uh, APRs, we had to serve at least 80% uh, to be considered your adequate, what's the term? Adequate uh, funded yearly progress. Yeah. yeah yearly progress at 80%. If not, uh, program officers are contacting folks like now to talk to you about that because they're getting ready to reissue the um, continuation awards. So they said you're pretty safe if you've done 80%. If not, go ahead and prepare your rationale because your, your program officer is going to ask for that. Hey, Rebecca, do you know if the Department of Ed is going to send us um, our annual email that says, prove, you know, you, yeah, you have not been down. Yeah. yeah, you know, I hope not. I don't know that for sure. They've nobody's mentioned it. I'll write that down and mm -hmm. we can ask them that question uh, when we get in the room with them tomorrow. But yeah, it usually uh, does come the end of May now that you mentioned that. Say one more time. It usually does come, that email usually does come the end of May. Like you have the percentage amount of your budget left. How are you planning to spend it? Yeah, it's so dumb. I mean, it comes in May and we have summer programs. <laughs> I've never understood that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any, anything else? Okay. Well, I appreciate each and every one of you. Please contact me if something does come up at president mm -hmm. at eoa.org. Mm -hmm. And I'll turn it back over to Roxanne and Angie. 
see you all later. Take care. Thank you, President Stewart. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Did they mention anything changing the trigger? I don't think they mentioned anything, Carrie, to answer your question. <laughs> I figured not, but it would be nice to know. I know. I know. I think um, they, that, that focusing on one subject at a time, you know, the carryover piece was maybe the best way to approach it rather than, um, you know, asking even three questions. We thought maybe if we could get headway with one question, it might be able to give us an answer. So I'm wondering if, if that question might be coming a little bit later. Yeah. An answer. All right. Well, I have to go to another meeting at four in a minute. So, yeah, thank you all for joining us. I tallied um, at least sixty-one participants on this call. So, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we appreciate your input and your listening. And uh, good luck with your summer program. I'm quite sure if we'll have another roundtable, but uh, we'll keep you posted. So, um, have a good summer and stay safe, Roxanne. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. All right. Bye bye.